So this is day 13 for me in the hospital, coming up on a milestone, 14 days in the hospital. Tomorrow I have five weeks to go, um, maybe six weeks to go before they let me out. So I have placenta, complete placenta previa and I also have a um, placenta abruption. So I am stuck in the hospital because I'm at a high risk of hemorrhaging and of preterm labor, my water breaking early and all sorts of fun things. So this video is to help you pack for a long-term hospital stay. So I know lots of videos cover what to pack for a hospital stay, especially when you're pregnant. Well, I'm gonna tell you what you should pack for the long term. Okay, so the very first thing that I think that you should pack for a long-term hospital stay is, well, all of the basics, right? So pack in a little suitcase, like a carry-on suitcase or a medium-sized suitcase. It makes it really easy to um, fit all of your necessary stuff in it. Um, and of course, you should bring comfy pajamas and clothes because the whole time they will not keep you in your hospital gown. You'll actually be able to put on like sweats and um, a shirt and things like that. You want to pack comfy bras, like spandex bras, nothing that's gonna be tight or restricting. And also if you're in maternity, um, you should not, um, well, probably not, I would suggest not, um, wear those high-waisted maternity pants instead, something that you can set low because you're gonna constantly be monitored and put on the monitor. So depending on your circumstances, you might get monitored as few and far between as eight hours, but you might also be monitored continuously. And therefore, they need to have really easy access to your stomach. Besides that, the doctors are gonna constantly wanna come in and touch your stomach and things like that. If you're unfortunate like me, I've even had injections of heparin, a blood thinner in, in my stomach um, twice a day. So be prepared for that. You also do not wanna pack any long sleeves because if you're in the hospital for a long time, you might get something called a power wand or a pick line. And this is basically an IV that can stay in your arm for 29 days and um, so they don't have to prick you every time. But they need to constantly have access to your arms for an IV. And so any sweater or anything that you get should be really loose fitting and you should wear short sleeves. You want them sleeves. to be cute. So these are a pair of pants that my sister got me and they're really nice, pretty, silky sort of pink. They don't have to be ugly, they can be nice. And I wanna say that that's really important because you feel better, but also, well, people are gonna come and visit you and you wanna look good. Um, especially if you're having a baby, everyone's excited for you, they wanna bring you things, they wanna support you and help you, and you just don't wanna feel like blah. So clothes that are comfy, cute, and you can get a lot of use out of. Don't think really outfit specific, think things that you can mix and match because you're probably not gonna be able to send stuff home to be washed that often. That's the problem that I'm running into. So as far as clothes, that was my biggest advice. Um, of course, comfortable, think comfortable. Comfortable is best. And if you have a pair of slippers, um, if you're allowed to walk around the ward, those could be really helpful too. Okay, so you know the toiletries are obvious. If you're in a long-term hospital stay, you probably wanna get things that are not travel size, but are probably not like the big jumbo ones either. Get stuff that is like those littler, smaller bottles of shampoo, but are full, are full size. Um, but don't forget things like, you know, your product that you're going to be using for like your stretch marks or to solve that itching that happens during pregnancy, like your cocoa butter, your bio oil, or whatever it is that you're using. I forgot that and my skin was just so dry and so itchy and it was ridiculous. And I had to um, have my mom go out and get me my stuff from home. Your skin is also really dry in the hospital because all the air is circulated. So just like bring lotion, you are really going to need it. Same thing with um, at home. I don't really have this much of a problem with dry lips, but my lips are so dry here. So anything that can help you out with that, like these little Vaseline tubes or Carmex is the best. Um, or whatever works for you, bring it because you're going to need it. You're going to keep it by your bedside. I promise you, you need it. Um, along sort of the toiletry lines, makeup removers are seriously a must in the hospital because the hospital staff comes in or like the doctors come in at like six o'clock in the morning and you might have like leftover mascara under your eyes and you try to take it off the night before. It's just really hard to get a lot of time standing up in the bathroom, especially if you're on restrictions like I am. So you will definitely want these. And this whole video, you might have been noticing my terrible, horrible nails. Well, I'm telling you guys 
have somebody bring you fingernail clippers. I'm waiting for someone to bring me them, hopefully tomorrow. Um, and also nail polish remover and oh, a file and maybe some nail polish. Those are things I wouldn't have thought of, but I've been in here two weeks and I had my nails painted red for Christmas and now they are a disaster. And it's really embarrassing. <laughs> so definitely that is something you want to bring. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, I don't care if I look nice at the hospital. Trust me, you're wrong. I told you you're gonna have visitors, which is well, hopefully you have visitors, right? You're a lovely person. I'm sure you're gonna get visitors. So bring what makes you feel good. So for me, wearing some makeup makes me feel much better. So I just got this naked ballot for Christmas. My boyfriend surprised me, even though we're going through a really hard time and I'm like, don't buy me anything. He did, because he's a sweet, he's a sweet guy. So he brought me this. Um, so bring like makeup and things like that. It Something makes you feel good. the hospital because the air is circulated. You are not going to be able to dry your hair unless your hair is really short. My hair is pretty long and I have a lot of it and I cannot dry my hair. So a blow dryer is a must. I learned that after my first hospital stay last month. I stayed for seven days. Um, I realized this time I definitely needed a blow dryer. So you're going to need this. Um, you also are going to be super bored. So of course bring something to read or entertain yourself. Um, crossword puzzles. I don't know, someone brought this to me. I haven't really used it yet, but I might. When boredom hits me, even worse. I'm really excited to read this book. Um, everyone knows I'm a bookworm, so catch up on your reading. I mean, do things that you enjoy, not just work like I was. It gets really my... stuffy. Again, no circulated air. So, um, and can kind of stinky because all your food comes in. There's just like, you can't open a window or anything. It just feels very lived in. So bring like a air freshener of some sort. I swear you're going to need this. Um, and of course there are things that you probably have thought of, but you definitely want to make sure you bring like headphones and things like that. You're going to need them. You're going to want them because they're very noisy in the hospital. Um, sometimes it's just like you need to relax and kind of just unwind. Um, for me, my mom has been really awesome. She's been staying in the hospital a lot with me, but sometimes I need like space away from her, even though I'm in the same room. I'm not gonna ask her to leave or anything like that. Um, like I want her company, but at the same time, I need to kind of just like collect myself. And that can be hard to do when somebody wants to constantly talk and like chat with you and just kind of reassure you, but you just need to be able to like center yourself. And for me, the headphones have really helped with that. Also to get work done, um, it kind of tells people, hey, like, like nurses can be really like nice and chatty and they're trying to be friendly because they know it's lonely, but at the same time, if you have your headphones in and you're working, they know it's like, okay, don't like disturb me. Um, by the way, I love my nurses. So, I mean, they can disturb me if they want to. They're really awesome. But sometimes you just need space alone and you don't get any space alone when you're in the hospital, like ever. It's really hard. Okay, and I think that's it for my video. I mean, I can't think of anything else. Oh, actually I can. All right, so I can show you because of how I'm like kind of stuck in the little spot that I'm in, am in right now, but you definitely want to, this is just a tip, you want to hoard anything extra that you get. So salt and pepper packets, and oh, have your family bring you like seasoning, like garlic and salt and pepper or hot sauce or tahini or whatever, because hospital food is notoriously bland and it's so expensive for your family to always bring you food all the time. And it's just unrealistic. So definitely bring the stuff that's gonna make your food taste better. And you can just bring little teeny bottles. So I have a drawer, a bedside table, and I hoard any crackers, like graham crackers or peanut butter or anything non-perishable that they give me that I might want to eat later, but not right now, that won't go bad. It sounds crazy, but when you're in the hospital, you just can get up to go to the pantry and get a snack and you're pregnant, right? At least I am, I'm pregnant and I want food and you probably will too. So hopefully that helps you pack for your long-term hospital stay. But please stay out of the hospital because it's not fun.